and welcome to the section 3 of the automated UI testing in C-sharp video course. During this section, we'll create abstractions, wrapping pages and page elements. Firstly, we'll get general idea of what is expected and how it should look like. Then, we'll wrap control objects and form an initial hierarchy. After that, we'll do the same for pages. Next step will be about optimizing and unification of page initialization. Thus, we'll create page factory. And, in the end, a small bonus will add functionality generating screenshots. So, let's go for it. In this video, we'll have general overview of what is going to be wrapped and why. Also, we'll define basic design of the future improvement. Mainly, it's about abstractions we need to create, as well as their structure and interactions. Before getting into detailed descriptions, let's take a look at current solution and see why do we need some additional ent entities at all. First of all, if you take a look at current sample test code, you'll notice that uh, some locators are explicitly used in multiple places. So, potentially, if UI is changed, We'll have to update all occurrences as of such locators, which is costly. So, we need to minimize the use of explicit locators. Secondly, locators usually reflect technical nature of elements and, especially in case of complex multi-level locators, simply don't give an idea of what actual elements is used. So, we could utilize additional abstractions to give elements clear logical names. This, in turn, should improve readability. It is important, as most of tests are being written just once, but then maintained multiple times. And finally, some elements can be custom and may reflect standard interaction with some additional operations, just like text field with lookup ability. In order to handle such elements smoothly, uh, we could use classes inheritance capabilities, which generally brings additional extensibility. So, generally, we have two major groups of abstractions. They are pages and controls. Let's start with pages. Page object should represent the logical structure of specific page of application under test. It should wrap common page level operations like screen resize, alerts handling, navigation, also, if we talk about web driver implementation, we need an access to driver object. So, page class is proper placeholder for this. So, in class hierarchy, the page class mainly should contain driver and some methods which are common for all the pages. Each application page should be reflected in classes inherited from the page class. Those inherited classes may contain an uh, object representing page controls as well as uh, some uh, methods specific for just for current pages. A lot of pages may contain similar elements of simply common sections. Since each page is reflected uh, with a class, uh, we can use dedicated page classes for common sections and inherit more specific classes for specific pages. Here we described high-level structure for page abstractions. The only entity which requires additional explanation is the control objects. If page objects are supposed to reflect and implement behavior for entire page, the control objects are wrapping functionality around specific control. So, in this hierarchy, the topmost class is the control. It should contain reference to the page containing it, as all controls uh, normally belong to some page. Also, it is the container of the elements locator. Here is the place where we explicitly define the locator only once. Also, the base control class can contain common methods applicable to all the controls, like check for existence, check for visibility, click, and many others. For more specific controls, we can use inherited classes, reflecting element type specifics. Thus, for instance, for text fields we can reserve edit class, which contains set text functionality. For drop-down lists 
we may need separate wrapper which gives uh, an ability to select specific list items. Some controls can also inherit functionality from specific element types. We still can use uh, inheritance for them. This hierarchy can grow as long as we add more abstractions, but general idea is already visible. Generally, page classes wrap functionality of web driver object itself, while control classes wrap functionality of web element. So, once we define the idea, it's time to define steps to implement it. In order to have some visible uh, results after each step, we should perform improvements in the following sequence. Firstly, we should wrap control objects. This way will minimize explicit locator use as well as we already can improve readability by giving, giving informative names to actual controls. Then we'll implement page objects functionality. After that, the next logical step is to integrate pages and controls under one entity, the page class. After that, we'll have to make some improvements to make such definitions more or less compact. These are the steps we will follow during this section. That was the general overview and main design for page and control wrappers. In this video, we've clarified benefits from such abstractions. Also, we've defined those abstractions themselves, as well as we defined uh, which attributes we expect to see in each of object types. Finally, we have some kind of roadmap for entire implementation. So, now it's time to make things live.